You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Fishing the DMV. I'm your host, Thomas Ahrens. And Jared Mounts with Jake's Bait and Tackle. So we got a fun little like in-between shows episode here. Uh, a, g- a good friend of mine called me up and was like, hey, I would really like to bring awareness to this really cool show that's going on since so many shows have been canceled lately. I think there's like, Jared, like what one or two big ones that have been canceled in the last week. Yeah, the Richmond show was uh, canceled this weekend uh, for threat of uh, of snow. And just so everybody knows too, you know, the <clears throat> the... To make a decision like that when you got people vendors coming out of north carolina and all across the country and just it takes them weeks to prepare and uh and the return on their investment i think they had a, you know everybody looks at it now and says yeah we could have gone but if you would have gotten hit with snow the foot traffic it really cuts that down and it's not good for the vendors but yes mm-hmm. i had minus four at my house this morning it's it's cold it's bad i just is it spring yet can we just get done with all this crap and we can actually move on to some nice weather right now well, this um, is a good but, way to be spending your day though listening to a live podcast on fishing yep absolutely so if you guys are in the winchester area uh you know feel free i guess you there's a couple uh, you got like an hour left you can go on <laughs> in and, and watch jared talk to a monitor at jake's bait and tackle uh it's one of the best places to to get anything that you need in the area uh, and then we got a really cool guest on today. We got Dave Smith of New Horizon Bass Anglers. We're going to be bringing him in right now. And uh, he's got some really neat things to to talk about and to bring awareness to. How are you doing, Dave? And then hopefully Dave can Hello. hear us. Hello. I, you- I, I got you. So uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. And then uh, how long have you been with New Horizon Bass? Um, New Horizon Bass Anglers, uh, it's a club that's been around, uh, over 30 years, uh, basically out of Northern Virginia. Uh, we fish, um, all, a lot of bodies of water in Virginia, uh, mostly the Potomac river, uh, but we'll fish the Pickahominy, we'll fish the James, we'll run down South and fish Gaston, um, Roanoke Rapids, uh, Bugs Island, Smith Mountain, um, and a few other smaller bodies of water around the state. Um, but mostly we fish the uh, larger bodies of water, uh, like Anna included. That that's really cool. That's really cool. Jared, you got a question? No, just 30 years. That's impressive. Uh, really strong. Yeah. The, uh, the, the, the club, uh, was started by, uh, two individuals, one, um, who fished actually in a club with my father, um, and they were having some issues, um, and they, he sat down with this other, the other person, Charlie Taylor, uh, started the club, sat down with another individual, and they worked out um, basically, you know, at the club and the bylaws to prevent the issues that they were having with other clubs with a lot of infighting and problems. And my father actually experienced this where somebody offered him money for one of the fish that he caught during a tournament because there was so much competition to win the championship that the person actually offered him money for a fish. And so they, they were trying to get away from that. Um, so they created uh, the organization and it's held up pretty well. Um, basically the, the club is about fishing and having fun fishing and fishing with multiple tournament partners. And we discuss the tournament you know, at the end of the tournament, we get together and talk about, you know, first, second, third, fourth place, all the way down. But everybody gets an opportunity to discuss, you know, what they did, how they caught their fish. And it's encouraged that you talk about what you did and how you did it. Now, did you, do you have to give away exact locations and everything specifically? No, but we share information and that helps out the, the new members, people that may not be, you know, the top fishermen, but over time, you know, they get information and they get clued in on little things and they start improving. And, um, you know, so it's, it's, it's worked for 30 years. And typically we have about 50, 55 members every year. We've had as many as 80 at one point in time. So uh, the club's been around, we, you know, the transient area, but we do have people like myself who have been in the club for over 25 years. 
That's really cool. Yeah, one yeah, thing that turned me on to them, uh, we, we were talking on Friday, actually. Uh, the year that I formed the, the Shenandoah University, I don't know if you guys can see that behind me, is my old jersey. Um, they had an open tournament on the warm side of Lake Anna. It was early, it was that early March time. And the one thing I know, you guys were, were very open to new people, getting you guys, getting new people involved in the club. And it was a really, really fun experience. Do you guys continue to go to the warm side of Lake Anna every year? We, we try to have a social tournament. We have uh, members that now live um, on Lake Anna and have access. Um, so we have a social event. We don't host tournaments um, on the, the hot side. Uh, we do our tournaments on the cold side. But it's a social event, and it's a good way for our members to get their boats out, uh, make sure everything's working and running. Um, and it's, you know, it's an early March type of tournament. And there's no prize money. There's no, you know, there's bragging rights, but um, it's just a prep tournament for the season, basically. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty cool idea, too, because I know we have a lot of anglers that don't like the competition, like for reasons you said earlier, where it can get pretty competitive and nasty. But I really like that idea to be able to just go out and fun fish. And that, and I noticed on your website, you talk about camaraderie, and that is, and that's even with tournaments, a lot of guys, we all like that. Uh, be able to get together and, uh, like you say, fish together, enjoy the outdoors, but also share, you know, what's working. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we've, we've, uh, the, that tournament, um, we do, um, and it's actually we've done them in the spring and the fall. And, uh, we've also done events where a member will invite, you know, club members after the tournament have a cookout at their house hmm. and everybody's welcome. Uh, to show up and, you know, hang out, chit chat, talk, you know, and uh, we talk about the results, you know, at the, at the cookout. Um, and it's, yeah, a lot of the uh, camaraderie, um, you know, the sharing of information. And we've had, we've had one, there were two guys that came out of Maryland that fished with us for a couple of years. And because of the commute and the back and forth and, you know, the, the, uh, where we launched from, it was, it just didn't work for them. But they took the bylaws, they took the idea and started a club in Maryland that is still around today also. They've been around probably 20 years um, that just based their club on what, what we've done. And it's done very well for them. So, And the competition's there, trust me. Um, two years ago, I fished a team tournament with one of our younger members. And there was a 100-team tournament um, on the Potomac River at the same day we would have finished in the top five. So uh, we got some guys that, that can fish and can compete, and some do go off and compete with, you know, uh, the bigger tournaments and part of the bigger tournaments um, and can do very well. So we, we can be competitive. We have some people that fish, you know, um, but the club isn't about that. The club's about getting out and having a good time and, and helping newer guys that, you know, don't have the experience or don't have the knowledge about the Potomac River um, to teach them about the river. And if you've been on the river when it's blowing, you know, 25 miles, you know, north and the wind and the tides go in the opposite direction and you're going out of Occoquan or you're going out of Leesylvania State Park, you really need to know what you're doing out on that river. Yeah, yeah that's for sure. That That's for sure. And that's a really good format to actually help get new members like hooked on the sport of fishing and, and get them introduced to everything. Um, now, let's also talk about, uh, they have a big show coming up, right? Can you repeat that? You're breaking up a little bit. The 26th year of the Dale City Bass Tackle Show. Oh, the, the upcoming show, uh, February 5th, uh, Dale City. Um, a couple of years ago, um, the gentleman. Uh-oh, spaghetti awesome. is. Yep, that's probably kind of part of it. Um, yeah, How long has your club been together that you're you're with right now? Shadow Valley? Yeah. Ah, great question. I'd have to look that up. Uh, quite some time. Um, I've only been, uh, Brian and I have only been part of it probably, we're in our sixth year, maybe seventh year, but mm -hmm. um, I would say probably the 80s. I'm going to have to look it up. But uh, wow. I tell you what, I love what he is doing. I mean, that's because there's there's definitely, he's back here. That's good. Lost yeah, but no. Uh, yeah. I'm back. <clears throat> yeah, but no, continue. Um, like about the the Dale City show, twenty six years doing it. That's amazing. 
Well, it's, uh, Bob was running it for about 25 years, 24 years, something like that. But he even stated that another club had ha had the event prior to him for about 10 years. Um, and he decided he was going to discontinue it. Um, New Horizon, we ran a show for a couple years up in Loudoun County in Sterling, and uh, it just didn't work out. And when I found out that this 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 show, the Dale City um, show, was going to fold, I just approached the, uh, the uh, members of the club and said, hey, how about we pick it up and see what we can do? So we looked into it, and uh, we found a way to make it work. And being a vendor at a bunch of the shows, um, I contacted the fire department at Hillendale and the people there, and we had a conversation. And, and actually, the person who's in charge of that, she said her father has been going to that show for, you know, 25, 30 years and would be very happy if it folded. And I said, well, let's see if what we can work. And, uh, you know, so we, we, we picked it up and we ran it the first year. Um, then last year we did we weren't able to have it, uh, but then we're back to having it again. This year we're making a few small changes, um, it, taking it from a flea market back to being a tackle show, uh, bass tackle specifically. Um, and I I I'm trying to promote those custom makers of baits, those guys that you know pour those you know plastics in their garage or you know in their basement or paint or make spinner baits or make jigs, you know, and those guys in the industry are the ones that I try to promote when I'm, you know, a vendor at a show. Um, I try to pick them up and promote their products as best I can um, because I think it helps the, uh, you know, the small vendors, the small businesses. And uh, so we're going to try to, you know, work our way back to having that type of show. No, that, that is really cool. That really gives the ability for people locally. You know, if you didn't get to be able to go to the Richmond Expo, that's a neat little place that you can always find something cool. Um, you know, a couple, I actually found a couple of w uh, wiggle warts actually at a flea market one time. And just because it's just those local people getting together and you can find some real diamonds in the roughs, guys. Um, and again, links in the episode description to the New Horizon Club and also to the Dale City uh, Bass Tackle Show as well. Oh, Jerry, do you have a... Uh, any questions? So how many, uh, for those that have never been to that show, how many, approximately how many vendors are we talking and what, um, what are some different things that people could, would find there? I know you talked about the custom. Is there, is there anything else in particular that people well, might find? Right now, um, we, we actually, the club is, um, inviting, I don't know if people know who William Lockfeld is, but he's known as Goldie. Um, he worked at Mayor of Acquire for a lot of years. He's fished probably the Potomac River probably since the 70s. He was part of the uh, the old six-man team type uh, tournaments that fished. And he happens to be good buddies with David Fritz. Um, he pours his own crankbaits. And I'm going to give you a picture of one here or try to get into view here. Um, he makes his own crankbaits. And I'm going to have him there. He's going to talk about it. He's going to have a booth. And he's going to be promoting his baits along with, here's one from Andrew Dixon. Here's a little crankbait by Andrew. Oh, that's um, nice. We had um, Cliff Pace came on uh, not too long ago and talked to the club about fishing crankbaits in tidal water. We had him a Zoom, you know, came on for our club meeting, which we, we invite vendors and people, you know, guides and fishermen uh, to come out and talk about their products um, as part of our meetings or monthly meetings. Um, Cliff Pace has, is sending me a group of baits that we're going to have. Um, I'm hoping, I hope, and I met him down at uh, the East or the Pigeon Forge uh, Lure Collector Show, um, Dale Prophet, and, you know, people who know crankbaits these are very tough to come by. He said he was going to send me some. From what I heard from collectors, he only sends them to friends and family. Wow. Or make them for friends and family. He said he was going to uh, ship us some. Um, so we're going to have a, a table just for Goldie to have to sell custom crankbaits and show how he makes his crankbaits. And he's been making them. He only makes about 400 per year, 
but he's been doing it for 20 years and he uses wow. them on the Potomac River and he's successful. And a lot of guys, I'm giving away some secrets here, but the guys that know his crankbaits and you know how to fish his crankbaits on the Potomac River are probably going to kill me for this, but you know, and he's a great guy, very knowledgeable, um, been in the industry for a long time. And he's just one of those guys that you find at these little, these little shows and these little, you know, um, flea markets, the fishing flea markets that, you know, you don't realize how much knowledge some of these guys have until you start talking to them and getting mm -hmm. to know them. So that's, that's one example that I'm going to have. I've got uh, custom bait uh, painters. Um, I'm trying to get, you know, lure guys. I was at Jake's not too long ago and I picked up one and another, you know, some of these guys that are making these custom baits that are at Jake's mm -hmm. and uh, I'd love to have these type of guys at the show um, and be able to promote their stuff. Yeah, because the cool thing about the custom too, is these are things you're not going to find like in a Bass Pro Shop or even a Green Top. Like it's, you can't find them just anywhere to your point. And so it sounds like a great show to, to attend. What's, what's it cost? The cost is $5 uh, to get in. Um, all of the proceeds go to the Youth Foundation. Uh, New Horizon is a, has a Youth Foundation. We put on two kids' derbies every year, one in June, one in July. Uh, we pair up with the Fairfax County Park Authority, and we use Lake Fairfax Park in Reston. And we do one in June, one in July. They're on Saturday mornings, and we go to the website if you, you know, want to go and fish that. For kids under 16, um, we typically have 150 to 325 kids that come out to fish that event. Um, and we've been doing, once again, we've been doing that for 30 years. Uh, and we've been hosting that. So all the money goes to prizes and, you know, paying for things associated with the kids' derbies. That's basically what New Horizon does. Um, you know, the, the tournaments that we fish, we have some prize money that comes out, but half of the prize money goes to the youth foundation so that we can host these kids derbies at Lake Fairfax park. So a fun story is <clears throat> I actually grew up in Fairfax. And so I grew up in the city and I fished one of those and I came in second. And I just remember the amount of cardio I got because that was a time where you had to catch a bluegill or a bass, or whatever, and you had to run it to the guy. And that is probably the most cardio I have. And I was an athlete and the, I was dead set. Every time I hooked a bluegill, you had to factor in. And for the guys listening, you talk about making a boat run back to the way and talk about wind sprinting to find the one dude that you have to weigh your fish in to give it to him. And then you'll have to haul your ass back to get fishing again. I needed an oxygen tank and a Red Bull buy, but it was fantastic. And it wasn't for those tournaments growing up. It, it, it gets you hooked. It gets you that little taste of it to then you can get out on a boat and then want to pursue it to the next level. So I, I absolutely love what you do. Now, let's say they can't make it to the flea market. Is there a way they could donate to help with the youth foundation? Is there a way on the website or somewhere else if, if they would like to do that? Um, by going to the website, um, you can get in touch with myself. Um, I've been the president of New Horizon for the past two years. I will be the president for this upcoming year as well. Uh, Charlie Taylor, you can find him. Charlie's been, you know, um, writing columns. He has his own website. But if you've read the local paper, you know, um, Richmond to, you know, out Loudoun County um, and, uh, you know, all over the, the northern Virginia, the little smaller uh, newspapers, he's had columns in those newspapers. Most people know Charlie Taylor, the football player, but there's also Charlie Taylor, the uh, fisherman. And uh, he's been doing his weekly um, fishing report for a long time. And you can contact him as well. Um, and you can get in touch with either one of us if you want to help us out in any way possible. Awesome. Now, you've got a great uh, website. I was looking on it. Uh, you, got, you can just tell you guys do a lot of great things. Um, and your website is also very informative. You've got a lot of great links on here. Um, for folks. So I encourage then, people to check that out, New Horizon Bass Angler. And again, that website will be listed in the episode description. Um, <clears throat> that way you guys can be able to find all the information available here. Um, thank you, Dave. Thank you so much. Is there anything else that you'd like to touch on while we have you here? Uh, no, but I appreciate you having us on. Um, and I, um, if anybody's interested in presenting to the club, at one of our meetings, I, I know Thomas and I'll, you know, I'll try to get you, maybe get Jared, um, try to convince some of the guys to come out and fish, you know, some of the bodies of water out uh, by Jake's. 
Um, we, we really don't fish anything um, out there, but if you guys come on and, and present and show, show the guys, you know, what you can catch out your way, we might, uh, you know, try to host a social event out there uh, this year. Our schedule's already set for this year, but maybe next year, you know, we can have a tournament out for direction. So what is your uh, – kind of talk to, again, a little bit about a scene on your website, but the different bodies of water that you're fishing. Because, again, I think that is so important with any type of club or organization like yours. It just – it forces you to get out of your comfort zone and find new bodies of water that you might not otherwise fish. Um, so maybe, you know, talk briefly to the different bodies of water that you guys are – you fish commonly. Well, um, you know, social events-wise, we've gone all the way down to Sandy Cooper um, just for fun. You know, for for a few days or a weekend or you know that type of thing. Um, Potomac River is you know a lot of people fish that. Um, James River, Chickahominy River, you know, tidal water. They're all a little bit different. The James and the, the Chick are pretty much the same. Um, the Rappahannock, the Lower Rap is 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 a different body of water, um, but still tidal. So um, we have those. We do a social event, or we've done social events down on the Pianca Tank. Um, if you've never fished that, that's an amazing body of water. If you go up the dragon, uh, you get both in pickle, now snakehead, bass, perch, you name it. But then you go the opposite direction and you're out on the Chesapeake and you're fishing for, you know, you can catch striper, bluefish, um, you know, any saltwater species. I was one of our club members has a place down there on the Pianca tank and uh, I caught a 20 pound, 25 pound skate on medium action, you know, spinning rod uh, one day. And it was just, you know, a battle, you know. Um, and so that's a completely different, you know, body of water. I think I caught a nice sea trout that, that day also. Um, so you can catch a lot of saltwater species and then run up into the dragon, which is fresh or brackish to fresh water and fish that. Um, Roanoke Rapids, a lot of guys don't fish Roanoke Rapids. They go down to, to uh, uh, Bugs Island or Smith Mountain. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Roanoke Rapids is a very interesting fishery that I don't know why people don't fish it. Is it because it's just so much smaller and you have Kerr and Gaston right there? Um, I had a friend that was actually on it and I, I went out there, man, you can just stick them left and right. It's insane how nice of a fishery Roanoke Rapids is. <clears throat> and that's the thing about Roanoke Rapids. We were just talking about it, Dave. Uh, it doesn't get the pressure that the other two do, which is just insane. Can you hear me okay, Dave? Oh, sorry. No, you're fine. The Roanoke Rapids, is that what you're asking yeah. about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, a it's fantastic so, body of water. It's below Gaston. You fish the, uh, you can go up and almost fish, right. or you can get close to the Gaston Dam, but it's below. And it's, um, you know, the, the water's constantly moving, either in or out. Um, but the water basically has to be moving for these fish to feed. They don't feed unless the water's moving. And you can start in the morning and be down 18, 24 inches and come back, you know, and uh, two, three in the afternoon and it could be full pool. Um, and, you know, it's just it, they change, you know, we, we were fishing. There's some some cut throughs on the center islands down by the dam and the water will be going one direction then turn around and start going the other direction and or just stop. You know, it, you never know what's going to happen. There's plenty mm -hmm. of grass. There's plenty of uh deep stumps so you have to be very careful on that body of water but there's some very big fish the first time we went down there we had a couple seven pound fish caught the, you know on, in pre-practice because we had never been there and we had guys who were catching seven pounders and we've had a few eight pounders caught down in, hmm. on that lake over the years um so it's it's a little bit different it's a small body of water uh like i said a lot of grass um good top water uh it's a lot of fun uh, bass, pickerel, um, pickerel just destroy topwater buzz baits. Mm -hmm. um, you see them coming and uh, you try to get it, you know, because you see that line coming through the water and try to get the buzz bait away from them or the top water away from them, but they just come up and crush, you know, baits. So, mm -hmm. uh, but the bass fishing is pretty good too. So, Dave, I'm curious too. So, these, this sounds really interesting. So, listeners, that uh, as far as your social events, to be able to attend those, do you need to be a member uh, first? Um, not, not necessarily. You could come out and, and do a couple events as a guest if you wanted to come out and find out, um, more about the club. Um, 
you know, all you have to do is get in touch with me or get in touch with the tournament director okay. and see, you know, we'd, you know, try to get you hooked up with one of the members, come out and fish as a guest. You'd pay the entry fee, um, which is. No, no, I'm looking at this right now. Hold on. Let me, uh, I'm going to share my screen real quick. This is interesting. Okay. This is another one that we're going to have to do a video on, I think. Um, it up right here. Let me for they. So, <clears throat> if you look at this map right here, you can tell oh, that okay. Roanoke Rapid is actually right below Lake Gaston. Um, and that's interesting oh, what wow. he said, for, like for our viewers at home, how how it's really dictated by current. That is also like the TVA. So it's so interesting. Like again, we hear these conversations about Virginia and the DMV is an area that has a little bit of everything. When we talk to Travis, believe it or not, and this right. is again, you can have a, a grass lake, you can have a lake that's like Lake Hartwell, and you can have a lake like just below this chain that fishes like, you know, the Tennessee river system. And this is right. all in the state of Virginia, which is so cool. I never even heard of Roanoke Rapids. Before. Yeah, I hadn't either. And um, like you say, talking to Travis and him, I'm glad he explained where it is. Cause it now makes perfect sense. Um, yeah. That is and, and cool. That's really neat. And so, Oh, we got, so we'll get him back on here, but that is super neat. Cause I did not know that that was actually here. Travis, you're there, man. So my hey, next question there, today is, is uh, my other question to that is, okay, um, like your social events, though, where it's not tournament format, are you guys like, I guess if you go for a weekend or something, are you like renting places or um, not necessarily a tournament, but uh, but the social events, the social fishing events, is that something anybody can get in as well? Oh, but the the social events, coming out and fishing the social events? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, as I was saying, the you you know you could contact me, you could contact the tournament director, and um, you know we try to set you up to fish with one of the members. Um, you pay the the if it's tournament, then you pay the entry fee. Right. Um, that would go to the youth foundation. Um, but uh, you know you come out and fish with us uh, for the social events. Anybody you know if you know somebody in the club um, and they invite you to come out and fish, you know. Um, the more, the merrier. Gotcha. That's, That's awesome. pretty cool. Yeah. Hmm. That is cool. So, uh, last Chris, question I have for you. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jerry. Yeah, no, go ahead. Go ahead, Thomas. Um, I was just going to say, are there any booths left? I just had a text message. Are there any booths left available at the flea market? Uh, if there's somebody else that would like to be a vendor or are you guys full for this year? Uh, you're gonna have to repeat that uh, once again. The, I'm just not getting good reception. I, I mean, you're you're, you're breaking you're up. Fine. I'm getting every you're, other word. You're fine. Mm -hmm. You're fine. Flea market vendors. Is there availability mm -hmm. still? Yes. Is there availability? Yes, we have availability. Um, contact me, um, Smith David L at Earthlink.net or five four zero eight four eight two one nine nine. Send me an email. Uh, give me a call. Um, we are selling 10 by 10 spaces um, with a table. You can set up whatever you want. If you've got a giant display and or you want to put carpeting down and bring, you know, a uh, couch, you know, whatever you want to do, um, you're more than welcome to do it. Uh, each 10 by 10 is $35, um, but we will reduce the cost. We're going to have a raffle. Um, and if you and you know give us a, a prize for the raffle, we'll reduce the, the price of the, the, the space. You can buy you know multiple spaces if you want, um, but uh, you know it's uh, plenty of plenty of space still left available. Good deal. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's all the questions I got, Jared. No, again, I just and I, I I've enjoyed doing this because didn't know about your organization. We got your flyer hanging up, but I hadn't really looked into it and. Uh, just a great, uh, just another great way. And I just love the fact there's a lot of tournament trails out there, a lot of tournament, but there is still a lot, I'm telling you, a lot of guys that don't want to spend the money, you know, and don't want to compete, but still love to fish. And I know, I mean, we've got so many memories of just when you get a group of guys together to go fish. Um, and, and like I say, not putting any money down or anything, just fishing, just fun fishing. I mean, it is, mm -hmm. it is a blast. So, uh, just to know that there's something out there like this, Thomas. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's, uh, I just think it's great. So, uh, hopefully, you know, our listeners out there will, uh, that might be looking for something like this, you know, what a great way to learn too, because that's the mm -hmm. other thing. It's so much easier to be able to tag along with somebody. And these guys have been down there before when you hook up with them, like 
they pretty much plan a trip for you. You're just kind of tagging along and, and you can mm -hmm. learn, you can learn so much about places to fish, bodies of water, the ramp. And then just like he was saying earlier, just different ways. And I, I just, again, I love the fact of after a tournament, you know, sharing that information because we talk so much and I get if big money's on the line. Yeah. You don't want to share, but this, you can tell by your website, you guys aren't, that's not you. If you want those places, they're out there. This is a way for you to go out and enjoy that, but also learn, you know, from each other what's working and what's not. I just think it's, it's hats off to you guys for keeping this thing going and, and hopefully your membership can grow and continue to get people on the water. And thank you again for the the youth tournaments, especially because coming mm -hmm. as, as a city boy growing up myself. Yeah, thanks so much because that it works. It, it does get kids hooked. I'm living proof of it. Um, and yeah, continue to do the great work. But we're going to, David, thank you so much uh, for, for coming right. on today, talking about the club. And then again, guys, link to everything is in the episode description below. Uh, go on out to, to Dale City. It's going to be a really good show. And, you know, hey, with Richmond and everything else seem like canceling, guys, this is going to be like a beacon just to get us tied over until the warmer months come. But, Dave, thank you, bud. All right. Appreciate it, guys. Yeah, thanks All for right. information, Dave. We'll see you, uh, dude. But hey, there you have it. So our first live stream, guys, um, it could have gone a lot worse. It could have been like my first time of Spirits and Ghost Stories where we almost set the house on fire, but that's a different story. So besides that, it, it actually worked out. First off, I didn't even know Road Runner Crap has existed. I have another screen, guys, and I'm just staring at this place like seven pounders. Whew. That could be a place that you guys could take your club in the future. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. And it's not far from... Uh... Like you say, Curb, Bugs Island, Gaston, everybody. And it's a good little haul from here. But, but again, if you got a long weekend, once you get down there, um, gosh, there is a lot of water to fish there. So, and I didn't even know it existed either. But uh, no, that's that's really cool. Did did you want to plug anything? Anything coming up with with Jake's? Yeah, that's what I was trying to think. Um, I'm trying to think. So, Shando Valley. Uh, thanks to Brian Henry, he came on. You asked that question earlier. 1989 uh, was when that. Uh, 1998 i'm dyslexic thanks brian popped up again established 1998 let's get that straight uh there is going to be a meeting um again this is a competitive uh bass league uh team uh let me see here i'm pretty sure we're going to be sunday the 30th january 30th at one o'clock at jake's bait and tackle we'll have our membership meeting so um one or two. I think it's going to start at one o'clock. Yeah, one to two here at Jake Shando Valley Bass Association. If you and or a partner, or if you're a single angler and looking for a partner, sometimes singles show up. Uh, boater, uh, if you have a boat, you'd be a boater. Even if you don't have a boat, you can show up. Sometimes they're looking for, you know, somebody is a single needing a, a co angler uh, mm -hmm. or even subs. A lot of times, subs you can pay, I think it's $35, I think, um, to enter this club. And then there's a 10, 10, uh, 10 event schedule, uh, fish in the Chickahominy, uh, Lake Anna, uh, Potomac River, um, Smith Mountain Lake, uh, potentially the Rappahannock. So uh, schedule's not out yet. But anyway, so yeah, uh, this Sunday, 30th, not this Sunday, next Sunday, the 30th at 1 o'clock. If you think you might be interested in that, come on out to Jake's um, if you want to be part of that. Sweet. Good deal, everybody. Um, I'm Jared, you are free to go. I'm going to, if anyone needs, has any questions, I will hang around for like two more minutes. Uh, and then I'm going to bounce. I know this was a little impromptu, but, uh, that guy made me feel pretty sentimental about the, like the Fairfax kid derbies. Cause I can't believe they're still mm -hmm. going on, especially with like, yeah, that was so long ago, but so yeah, just trying to get him on, try to get the flea market. I felt bad. I was going to go to the Richmond expo with my wife this weekend. And then when I heard that got canceled, it's like, dude, it's like, everything's getting canceled left and right now. It's terrible. Mm -hmm. Um, but it is what it is, but yeah, Jared, yeah. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, impromptu like this and then yeah, no uh, yeah. don't forget uh, your new new uh, podcast dropping what every tuesday new podcast episodes dropping every tuesday uh we're getting toothy with it this week guys we have um porter talking about musky fishing on the upper potomac river um then we have another upper potomac one coming right after that so it's, it's going to be a nice little stretch here some local waters to for everybody sounds good thanks thomas <clears throat> you're welcome Oh, righty. So I guess it's now just me and chat. So does anybody have any questions before I pop off here? I know I had a, uh, a new video dropped. I know I had a billion questions on that one. 
all the baits that I use can be got can be purchased at Jake's Bait and Tackle. Um, so if you're in the Winchester area, feel free to stop by there. You can get them. Um, but besides that, I'll be also doing a live stream next Saturday where I just kind of talk to you guys about where I'm going to go with this and then try to have some impromptu guests. It's not like a formal podcast. It's more of like a get together based on all the responses I got about doing a live radio show. I think we got like 40 likes and a bunch of comments on a couple of Facebook pages about doing that. So next, next Saturday morning, I'm just going to come on, probably have some guests on. It's not a podcast. It's more of just an impromptu. Let's just talk with the community. Let's see what people have going on. It either will, will suck or it won't, but I don't care. We're going to try it. So with that said, since I don't see any questions coming through here from anybody, do, do, do. All right, sweet. Well, then we're going to end this bad boy. So I'll see you guys later. My name is Thomas Aarons of Fish in the DMV. And that right there is Jared Mount. See ya. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Aarons and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.